Hi friends, welcome to Time Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to install and use a free database administration tool called dbweb. So this is how it looks like. Why do we need to use dbweb? You know, using one single tool dbweb, you can manage multiple database types like MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, Oracle, and many more. So no need to download each tool for each type of database. You can use one database administration tool called dbweb and in that tool you can manage multiple types of databases it is also a cross-platform tool so it can be installed in windows linux and mac so let's try to open the dbweb website so i'll just open the dbweb website here so this is the dbweb website dbweb.io and here they are telling that it's a universal database tool without much delay let's try to install dbweb so to install dbweb you can click the download button here click on this windows 64 bit installer then you will download this dbweb setup file and I'm gonna click this. So I will be presented with the installation window now. So I'll select the language English and press next, 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 that's all. All right, so now I've completed the dbweb community edition installation. So I'll just finish this. And now I will open dbweb. So as you can see I've got a dbweb app already installed now. So I'll just open this dbweb app. So here you can see the dbweb app is open in my PC now. Before going ahead, I just wanted to tell how can you install dbweb in Ubuntu or other Linux types distributions. So here dbweb has given a link called dbweb.io slash download from where we have actually downloaded the installer. And here they are given the instructions and what are the commands which are required to install in Linux systems and Mac OS systems. So here you can see they are given files for Mac OS and here they are given the files for Linux systems. And here at the bottom, they have also given the installation instructions for Debian, Ubuntu and so on. So you can go ahead and see this dbo.io slash download to get to know about the instructions and files for installing in other operating systems. All right, so now let's proceed with using dbweb. In our previous video, we have talked about why a database is required and we installed a Postgres SQL database, which is an open source and awesome database. And we also used a PG admin tool, which is used to perform database administration over Postgres. So now we have installed dbweb, right? So let's try to do database administration of the database, which we have created in the previous video. So the database is still live on my computer. So let me try to connect to the database and try to perform database administration over this. So I'll just click on this new connection button here. So let's click on this new connection. And here you can see, in dbweb everything is a plugin so if you want to connect to a particular type of database you have to have that plugin installed in your dbweb installation so here you can see there are a lot of databases that are being supported by dbweb and here now i want to connect to the postgres sql database so i'll just click on this postgres sql and i'll just go on next and here they are asking the connection parameters since the database is installed in my own pc i'll, I'll have to write localhost and here I'm going to write 5433 because actually my database is hosted at 5433 and the database name is Postgres and the username is Postgres and the password which I've set in the previous video and the Postgres SQL database I installed was Postgres SQL 14 so I'm just going to leave it Postgres SQL 14 and then I'm going to test connection first so here you can see connection succeeded so now if I just click here finish I'm getting a connection of my Postgres SQL database so if I just expand this connection, you can see the databases and here I've got my Postgres database, schemas, public tables. But in my previous video, I've actually connected to the database called test. So I have to connect to the test database. So I'll just edit this connection. So here I'm going to write the database name as test1. That was the database name which you created in the previous video. So I'll just click on OK. And it's asking to reconnect. I'll just reconnect and I'll just expand this. And here you can see the database test1. And here, these are the schemas, public. And in the previous video, we have created a table called students, where we have stored the details of some students. And here, you can, if you click on the data tab, you can see the data of the table also. And here in the properties tab, you can see the column name, what are the data types and all. And you can see the constraints that it is a unique, we have created a unique key constraint in our previous video. So you can see the unique key constraint and the primary key. And you can see the indexes for and is it's really convenient to use dbweb actually. You can even see the ER diagram. So you can see the entity relationship diagram. You can see that there is a database called students and it has a column called ID, name and date of birth. And if you have multiple databases and if they're linked with foreign keys and all constraints, you can even visualize this here. So this is a great tool and a free community tools 
where you can even see the ER diagram of the database. ER means entity relationship diagram. All right, what if I want to perform a query on this database? So I'll just right click and do the SQL editor, open SQL script. And here you'll get a SQL script editor here. And let me try to create an SQL script here. I'll just write select star from public dot students and i'll just run this command i just created this sql script which is selecting data from the student table and i'm just clicking on this play button which is the sql statement execution and this is the sql script execution so if you click on this sql script execution whatever the number of lines you write in this sql editor will be executed at once so i'll just click on this sql script and i'll just execute it and here you can see my database tables and if, here if I want to select only the ID and name columns, I'll just write select ID comma name from students. So I'll just, I'll just run the script again and the same ID and name. So basically by right clicking on the database, SQL editor and open SQL script, you can actually create an SQL script and you can run your SQL scripts on the databases. And the best part about the DBOR is you can access multiple databases in a single tool. So if I have an Oracle database, suppose I'll just have to click on this new database connection and click on Oracle. I'll just search for Oracle here and I got Oracle here and that's it. You have to connect to the Oracle instance. It may be in your remote computer. It may be not on your local host. It may be somewhere in your local LAN or it's something like a remote database. Just be the host name and you can get connected. So you don't need to install a database to run DBWR. It's just a database administration client and you can connect your database remotely using DBWR. And now if you want to connect to a MySQL database, I just have to click the new connection and write MySQL here. And you can see you have support for MySQL connections also. And if you have a SQLite database, just click on this and write SQLite. And you got SQLite database support here. So you can click on the path and you can actually browse for the SQLite database. And this way, using DBWR, you can connect to multiple databases, but the user interface is going to be same. So you don't need to learn or you don't need to get habituated to multiple database user interfaces. It's just a single user interface called DBWR. And using DBWR, you can connect to multiple types of databases in a single tool. All right. So now let's go to the next topic, installing DBWR plugins without internet. So in order to connect to a new type of database, DBWR requires the database drivers or database plugins. And those are not coming by default with DBWR. So DBWR has to download that plugin from the internet. So what if you want to run DBWR in a PC without internet? Maybe it's a very restricted corporate LAN. So how can you use DBWR then? There may be many ways, but I will just tell you the way which I am very convenient and which is very easy. The process involves just two steps. The first step is download the database plugin jar files in a computer with internet. So basically take a laptop or computer which is accessible to internet, use DBWR there and download the database plugins there. And the next step is take these downloaded jar files to the computer without the internet and use those jar files to connect to the database. So I'm going to show you a process how, can, how it can be done. To do this, you go to the DBWR software, click on the database and click on the driver manager. And now you click on any driver which you want to actually support in your PC without internet. So if you want to get the Postgres SQL drivers in the PC without internet, I'll just select the Postgres SQL driver, which is already existing in my PC. And I'll just click edit. I've got a driver setting screen for Postgres SQL driver. And here you can see these are the settings for my Postgres SQL driver in my PC. And here there's a tab called libraries. And here these are the libraries which are required for the Postgres SQL driver. And here you can see if I expand these, these are just jar files. And if I am managed to take these jar files into the PC without internet and use these jar files, then I can create a new Postgres SQL driver in the PC manually. So first thing before you actually copy these jar files, click on this download or update button so that it downloads all the jar files and the updated jar files from the internet. So now I've got all the jar files and you just hold your mouse over here. You can see the location of the jar file in your PC. All right, so this is the location in my PC where my dbwr database drivers are present so here by hovering the mouse over this jar file or this library file i was able to get the location of the jar file and then i went to this folder and now for postgres sql i need three jar files postgres sql 42.2.5 postgres and postgres geometry so let me try to find that here net.postgres and here about the geometry jdbc and 
there's one more thing called or plot post sql and i got this job file so basically i will just copy these two folders and copy it in my pen drive or some storage medium and i'm gonna copy paste these two folders in the pc without internet and then what you do there is you go to the database driver manager and click new so in a pc without internet you click on the database driver manager click new and here you select the database type as postgres sql and here you, you have to fill this data right so in order to fill this data before copying the files you need to copy the configuration also so in the pc with the internet click on the postgres sql and you just click on the edit and take a snapshot of all the settings which are used to actually install this database driver so let's take a snipping tool and i'll just copy this image so that i can use it in the pc without internet so i'll just copy the settings and i'm just saving this image and while creating the new database connection or new database driver i'll just click on new and i'll select the settings based upon the snapshot so here my snapshot is basically i have to select postgres sql driver type so i'll just select the driver type as postgres sql and here the driver name or to postgres sql dot driver jdbc so i have to fill all these settings in these fields as per my snapshot and then in the libraries tab you just add, click on the add file and you select all the jar files which are required so here my jar files required were this one this jar file add file and i got two more jar files with this net.postjs and i open those now i got my jar files fill the settings and click on ok then your new driver will be ready from the jar files which you have taken offline so why we are doing this is you are actually installing the drivers offline so this way using jar files you can even install the drivers offline in the PC without internet and perform database administration on different types of databases. In my blog post, I have even given you the settings screen of each type of major database type so that you can use these snapshots as a reference while doing the offline installation of database plugins in dbWare. You can see I have created a blog post on installing and using dbWare. I have even given the links and instructions and snapshots that are useful for setting up dbWare. I have even given you the reference links to do further reading. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.